Ian Corliss from iancorliss.com here. I've written a couple of articles on fast packing and I've been asked to go through the typical equipment that I would use or I would recommend for a fast pack. So here goes. The, the priority to start with is the rucksack. Um, now typically something like this around about 20 to 25 litres would be an ideal starting point. This is currently my favourite pack, it's an Innovate Adventure Light 25 and unfortunately it's not available on the market. This was made for the Innovate team and I've been very lucky to grab one and loan it um, but it, it's stunning because it has a vest-like fit which is great for holding the pack against your body and your torso it means that you can put soft flasks or bottles on the front so you've got access to water there's also the additional pockets for snacks or food and then the other thing that i like is that it has a waist belt now waist belts get some sort of negative comments in the running community and particularly with fast packing but with me I like it because it helps to, to take some of the weight and it also stops the pack moving around. So typically the, the pack is one of the heaviest items and it's an important item because it has to be comfortable holding the weight and for the duration of your fast pack. So it's a really, really important item. This one comes in around about 600 grams, uh, which is typical for something around about 25 litres. Other popular packs that you could look at are Ultimate Direction, who make a very specific fast pack. Raid Light also make fast packs, and they've been tried and tested in races like Marathon des Sables, so we know that they work. It all comes down to personal preferences. So that's the pack. Now, depending on the fast packing that you're doing, you might be going from hut to hut, and so therefore a tent is not needed. So let's assume that a tent is needed. So if you're solo packing, you, you want a solo tent, there's no need to carry a two-man tent. Um, I've currently been testing the Nemo, which is a one-person tent, nice and small, only 500 grams for the fly sheet and the inner. And then with the poles, it comes in at around about 730 grams so it's really really great what i do is is i will actually take the tent out of this bag um, i don't like items in other bags inside the rucksack it's much better to have one space and push things in and i'll come on to that in a minute and explain but the the nemo Hornet one person tent around about 700 grams is absolutely ideal. There's lots of other tents on the market by MSR, Nordisk. I've tried and tested all of them. This happens to be my, my favorite at the moment. So I'll come on to that later. Then the next important thing and probably the heaviest thing is the sleeping bag. Now, one thing that's important to consider is that there is no one kit for, for every fast pack. You have to understand how many days you're going out, what type of weather you're going to encounter. Are you in a hot climate? Are you in a cold climate? So, so all the items that I'm now going to me mention, you have to assume that you're getting the specific one for your needs. So a good example is the sleeping bag. Okay, so this is my current favourite. It's a RAB. It's a Mythic Ultra 360. It weighs 600 grams and it compresses smaller than this and, and I'll come on to that in a minute. This has been great in UK summer and Norwegian summer. Um, it's warm enough on the, on the chilly nights and it has a zip so I can uh, unzip it on the, the hotter nights and sort of have my torso out to regulate my temperature. But as a comparison, Look at the size of that and this is small this is small for a sleeping bag that is this warm this is my other sleeping bag this is made by phd it's a summer bag and this is only 240 grams so you see the difference in fast packing here know the weather 
know the conditions and choose the item that you need. Now, of course, let's say I was fast packing in Nepal, then my sleeping bag would be even bigger than this one because I'd need a warmer sleeping bag. So be specific and get the sleeping bag that you need for the conditions. The next thing, probably the heaviest item, is a sleeping mat. Um, this one is made by Exped. It is not the, the lightest sleeping mat, mat on the market. Um, my favourite is a Klimit Ultra V Lite. Um, I also have a Seat to Summit, which is just a torso um, mat, and that is only 250 grams. So again, in a solo tent like this, if, if weight is, is, is the, the key, key priority, a mat that is just enough for the torso is going to be lighter than a full length mat. So it also depends on how much comfort you want. If you're only out for one night, you can withstand a little bit of discomfort. But if you're going to be out multi-packing for seven days, eight days, ten days, then maybe a little bit extra weight in your sleeping mat will give you a good night's sleep every night. So consider that. The cooking system. Um, this is my favourite. It's an all-in-one cooking system. It's made by MSR. It comes in this little mesh bag and normally I would get rid of bags, but with, the, with this kit I don't because it does help to keep everything together. So it comes off and what I quite like about it is I then use it so that I don't lose the other things that are in here. Now the great thing about this, it's a cooking pot, but it also has a cup. Great use of space. This weighs nothing, it's a couple of grams. There's the lid, the handle, so that when this is hot, you can just get hold of it like that. And then inside, it fits the burner, a lighter, so I can light it, and the gas canister. Now, for a small footprint and low weight, this is one of the best out there. And I'll just show you what it all looks like. So quite simply, you open up the, the burner and this screws onto the gas canister. You're gonna hear a little bit of a sizzle as the, the connection is made. So there you go. Then of course, this sits on top. Then you've got your lid, then your handle so that you can get the hot pot off and then you have a cup. Amazing cooking system, super light, there may be other better ones on the market, but I haven't found one yet. This is my favorite. And then I'm gonna come on to my next thing. I'm sort of jumping ahead a little bit here. Fast packing for me, I have to have coffee. If I don't have coffee, I'm grumpy, really, really grumpy. Now, I do indulge myself in an Espro uh, flask, which is like a proper metal cafetiere, um, but it is excessively heavy for, for fast packing. And on, on occasion, I will take it because that's what I want to take. But I found this. It's basically a coffee filter. It's made by MSR. I think it's 23 grams. But quite simply, you take a little bag of coffee with you on the trail. You put your fresh coffee in here. You boil your water. You put your water in here and then sit the coffee in. Let it soak for five minutes and you have fresh coffee. Essential, absolutely essential for me. I know some of you are probably thinking, really get a life, but no, that is essential. Um, now then let's go on to the other things that are essential, not necessarily coffee. Um, I always take a down jacket and the, depending on the temperatures, I will either take a down jacket or a vest, um, and by a vest I mean a gilet. So this is a Rab Kayon, it comes in at around about 245 grams. It is down, but it's treated so it can get wet and retain warmth, which is unusual, because most people say that down will not retain warmth in, in wet weather, this one does. So it's great. It has one breast pocket and no, no hand pockets. Again, that's all about saving weight. It's got a hood, it's got a high neck, 
and it's and it, it's really light it packs small super warm uh, it's my favorite favorite jacket and of course if you're going to uh, colder climates you basically just need a warmer version of something like this this is my my vest so I wouldn't take this and the jacket I would take either or so the vest zips into the pocket and again all this lot would go into one bag I, I don't leave things in these pockets I just compress them all in because it use, utilizes space this is Patagonia, it's a sleeveless jacket, it's 180 grams, um, it's not down but it's as warm as down and it packs really really small, um, again one of my favourites. So both of those, depending on which one you take, would be in conjunction with um, merino base layers, so long leg base layers and a, a long sleeve top. These are Icebreaker, the 150s, which is the lightest merino that they do. So these can double up is in the, when you've finished in the daytime and you want to take off your shorts or your trousers or your t-shirt, whatever, you can leave them out, wash them, and maybe dry them and put these on so that you're warm. And then they double up at night as pajamas. So you wear them inside your sleeping bag, so therefore, you can make your or choose a lighter sleeping bag knowing that with base layers you're making the sleeping bag warmer and then if it's really cold you put these on and your jacket and suddenly you've increased the sleeping bag warmth three times. This is the important thing about fast packing is that you have to think about how you go light but don't lose the important things like comfort and warmth. So essential. In addition to the, the, the warm layers, I have a waterproof jacket. This is a Rab Skyline, 80 grams. It's like featherweight. Now, of course, this would have limits in really, really heavy rain, but it has got tape seams. So if I knew that I was gonna be going into really, really bad weather, then I would probably take a jacket that is double the weight of this. So around about 180 grams instead of 70 or 80 grams. Um, it would just be, it would be better for the duration of a fast pack. Uh, this is really about fast and light and, and ideal for one night, two night fast packs. Essential for me is a, a buff, a hat and gloves. Gloves in particular, I have a real problem with my hands getting cold. So I will indulge myself on a pair of um, merino base layer gloves and then I will use a mitt so that way I can I can get my hands really warm if I need to. Um, a buff is essential, nice for, for keeping the neck warm, you can use it as a hat and also um, at night you can bring it on, put it over your eyes and it makes a, a blindfold, essential. And again a hat really important um, cold nights cold days hat keeps you keeps you nice and warm um, if I was only going for one night or maybe two nights I wouldn't bother but this is a towel um, this is really really useful it packs small they dry really quick um, it's nice if you've got the opportunity to jump in a river, jump in a stream, jump in a lake and wash off and you can use the towel to, to dry yourself. Obviously you're being minimal so you're not carrying spare t-shirts and all sorts of items that you can just start changing your clothes. So, so this is a, a, a useful way for cleaning yourself off in the day. Put your base layers on uh, and then let your, your running uh, kit dry and then it's fresh for the next day. Um, I mentioned about the buff being used as a blindfold but I, I do like to take this blindfold. This I can't remember where I bought it but, it, but it's, it's my favourite blindfold and the main reason is it's, it has this little pocket with my earplugs in the side because I'm forever using losing earplugs. Now in this blindfold you can put two in that side and two in the other side. <laughs> They're not there at the moment because I've lost them. <laughs> 
Um, first aid kit in a waterproof bag. You've got to take that. It's essential. Um, hopefully you don't need it, but if you do, you do. So have one with you. Just get the smallest with the burr, burr essentials. Pair of smart wool merino socks. I think I don't really indulge on taking any spurs of anything else, um, but socks. It, it, you know, you're going to get your feet wet. So being able to put a pair of dry socks on when you sleep is important. And, and having spur socks, essential. This is a sleeping bag liner. It's a silk liner. Um, this is a complete optional extra. But if you're worried about warmth, this is something that you could take. The other thing that is also worth mentioning here, if you're going hut to hut, you often don't need a sleeping bag, but you do need a liner. So having one of these is, is something that you can or cannot use, depending on, on the type of trip that you're doing. So, so for example, in Norway, if you're going from DNT cabin to DNT cabin, sleeping bags are not required, but a, a sleeping bag liner is. So you've saved a load of weight by not taking a, a sleeping bag, and, and this weighs next to nothing. It's a silk liner. Head torch. This is one of the most minimal head torches you can get. Um, I would only take this if I was using it in camp and, and that was just for seeing what I was doing. If I needed the head torch for running, then I would take a, 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 a meatier one than this. Um, the, the, something like a 200 lumen, because trying to run with the illumination from this head torch is, is not good. It's ideal for camp, for, for checking your sleeping bag, checking your watch, looking at your phone, basically finding where things are. But for running, no. You'd need something, something much more substantial. And a Black Diamond Spot 200 would be uh, my recommendation. It's got 200 lumens. It only takes uh, a, a small battery and it has good battery life. So, so that's worth considering. Um, this is a Goal Zero battery pack. It's got a USB built in so you can recharge it and a USB socket. So this is great if you need to charge up a watch or charge up your phone. You will only get one charge out of it. Um, so if, if you're going to be out longer, maybe you'd need to consider a bigger battery pack. But, but for most of us these days, something small and similar to that would be ideal. An indulgence, um, certainly if I was going fast and light this wouldn't go, but, but this is a hammock. It's uh, an Amazonas ultra light and, and you could use this instead of a tent or you can use it as a place to hang out if you're, if you're taking a leisurely fast pack. Of course, if, you, if your only consideration was lightweight, you wouldn't take this. This would be an indulgence. An essential thing for me um, is this. This is an MSR trail shot and it's a water purifier. The one thing about going fast and light is you can't carry enough water for, for whatever it is that you're doing. You can't even carry enough water for one day. So this allows you to get water from any source and, and it can be used in several ways. You can put this into the water source and you pump it and you can actually drink from it like that or you can use it and fill for example if this was a container you'd just pump and it filters the water and the the amount of bacteria it gets rid of is 99.9 percent .9%. obviously getting water from the trail it's always better getting water that is flowing than static and just be careful that it's not below where animals are feeding um, because for obvious reasons animals go to the toilet and that can get into the water source and although this is taking most of the bacteria away you just run the risk that you might be getting some bacteria in the liquid of course if you're boiling the water then you, you you're fine you're going to get rid of everything so so this is a really important thing and then the other thing that i use um, is this, it, it, 
I, I now only take one flask when I'm running. This is a, a 600 milliliter soft flask. But what's great about this is it has the water filter built in. So you can take water from any source, drink on the trail, and it filters the water. So there's no need, unless you know that water source is going to be limited, there's no need to carry more than one 600 mil flask. And of course, when I say there's no need, that's when you must do your research and understand where water is available when you're fast packing, how often you can get water. And if it means that, that water is going to be two and three hours apart, then maybe you need to carry two of these. But for most of the stuff that I've been doing lately, I've only needed one. And this has been fantastic. It's been a real find. Um, one of the last things is this. This is a, a, a bivy bag. Now, I will say about a bivy bag is that if you're carrying a tent, there's no real need to carry the bivy bag. I mean, the bivy bag works as a, an emergency shelter, but if you have a tent, then you don't need to carry both. So if you're going fast and light, hut to hut, take a bivy bag. If you're taking a tent, you don't need the bivy bag. And then finally, um, food. You've got to eat and drink while you're out on the trail. Now, of course, hopefully you're going to get plenty of water, but you can't carry enough food, fresh food anyway, to keep yourself going on the trail. So dehydrated food is essential. Um, there's many different brands on the market. Uh, this is a, a brand called Firepot and got introduced to this in the last couple of weeks. And in all honesty, I could eat these every day. They are so good. Um, we've been testing all sorts of different flavours and tastes and they do take longer to hydrate, 15 minutes, rather than sort of the typical 7 or 8 minutes. But, but the benefit is, is it feels like real food. Um, now of course what you can do is, is these work by you ripping the top off, opening the pack, pouring the hot water inside, sealing and letting it cook inside the bag. But what a lot of people do, particularly for races, is that they, they take the packaging away and, and, and do the packaging again and then use something like this to cook the food in. Now it's your choice. This is really, really convenient and if I was going out for one day or two days, I'd just use these. But if I was going out for 10 days, then I'd probably repackage everything and put it into sealed bags and then that way I've reduced weight. You need snacks for the day. There's many different things that you can do and, and I'm not going to tell you what to use or, or, or the options. Something like a cliff bar is always in my bag. Of course, again, if you're out for 10 days, carrying 10 cliff bars would be maybe the, too heavy. So you have to look at options of what is the lightest, what gives you the right amount of calories. What access will you have while you're fast packing to, to shops or cafes or somewhere where you can supplement? I mean, if you're regularly crossing roads where there might be a supermarket, then keep food to a minimal and buy food on the way. But if you know that you're going out in the wilderness and you're not going to see anything for four or five days, then you need to make sure that you've got food and supplies that will last you the amount of days that you're out. Now, of course, that is weight. So you need to balance up the weight with calories. And then I've mentioned fresh coffee, essential for me, but there's other ways that you can have coffee. You can get these little sachets. You can buy them, you know, normal coffee, decaffeinated coffee, decaffeinated coffee. Why would you have decaffeinated coffee? What is the purpose of decaffeinated coffee? But you can buy these or, or what you can do is stay in a hotel and keep asking them to replenish the room and just take them away. Um, and then tea bags, you know, a lot of these tea companies now package them in nice individual packs, which is great. Um, I'm sure that some of you might email me in and say, well, if you take all the cardboard packaging off the tea bags, you'd save four grams. Yes, you're right. Fast and light, take the packaging off and just have the tea bags. So to, to conclude, I'll give you a lot of different items here, but what I want to do now is sort of mention a dry bag. So this is the 30 litre dry bag and the reason why I use a 30 litre is the pack is 25. And 
what's great about something like this is that when all these items look like this and they're nice and pretty, they're not effective in a pack. Really, they're not effective because you, you, pull, you fill your pack with these like Lego bricks and you end up with all these spaces and it's a waste. So what you do is, is you take everything, and I mean everything, and you, you take them all out of the packaging. All these stuff sacks, all, it's all weight. You only need one stuff sack. And I'm gonna give you an example. So, so basically now you, you, you take your dry bag and you start to push everything into the dry bag. Okay, so my towel, my hat, my book, my gloves, my socks, first aid kit, head torch, blindfold, waterproof jacket, down jacket, base layers. Now, of course, I am being reckless here because you would think about how you layer this. You know, you, you'd put the things that you don't need quickly at the bottom and the things that you do need at the top. I'm just being reckless and just chucking everything in. Let's take the small sleeping bag because it, it's really nice and light. So no point in leaving it in this. You take it out. Stuff that in there. Sleeping mat, take it out of the bag. Put it in the top. One thing I didn't mention, a pillow. It's nice to have a pillow. Oh, and another tip is that when you inflate your pillow, your buff acts as a pillowcase. Nice and snuggly at night. Pillowcase. And that's, that's everything, okay? That is everything, okay? And you see, now it's all in one space and you just put it inside your rucksack. None of these cubes and tubes that are all messy. And of course, the, the other thing that you do, obviously, is you get all the air out, keep compressing it, and then once you've sealed it and fastened it, irrespective of the weather, you've got, out, got all your kit in one bag and then you take your rucksack and pop it inside. Perfect. That is the way to fast pack. Now I will add one other thing is if you're heading out into snow, ice, it is worth thinking about the, the, the things that can happen. So there are a couple of things that you might want to consider. Mini crampons, they are obviously quite heavy, but they are something that you can pop in your pack if you know that you're going to get snow and ice. So, so a consideration. And then the other thing is, is an ice axe. Um, this is the lightest ice axe in the world, apparently. It's only 225 grams. Um, taking the advice of Killian Journey, if I cut it down, <laughs> it will be even lighter and it will fit inside my pack rather than the outside. So I haven't been brave enough to cut this down yet, but if I take it about 10 centimeters off and make it this small, it will fit nicely inside my pack. Um, so there we go. I think that's pretty much it. There is one thing that I didn't mention, which I always take, and I don't have it here with me, is a spot tracker or a Garmin inReach. Um, it's essential that you have some way of, of being monitored, being found, being tracked. Um, and of course, in addition, a mobile phone. But I think all of us carry a mobile phone these days. And then the last thing I will say is that when you go off on any adventure, tell somebody where you're going where you're going and when you'll come back.
and then at least you have somebody looking out for you in case there's a problem. And that's it. Enjoy the adventures.